Hey everybody, welcome back to the flight deck. Today we're doing another general aviation flight. This time we're in Western Canada and we're going to go visit the Rockies. But I'm not going alone. Sitting behind me in that piper over there is Willie Canuck. Howdy. There he is. Uh, short flight. It's about an hour. We're going to head out from here. We're just outside Calgary at the Springbank Airport. You can kind of see the Rockies off in the distance behind us there. And we're going to head that way, fly up a couple of the uh valleys and in between the mountains and we're heading up to golden bc uh which is going to be our destination point uh as i said it's about an hour's flight and we'll be taking in the sights as we go so we're going to get fired up and taxi out to runway 26 and then we'll head out you ready to go ready to go man okay let's jump in the cockpit and we'll start getting this thing up and I'm running. I'm on prep, so I'm going to okay. kick off. You'll hear me in the background, so, but you go ahead. Mags and masters are on. Let's get rid of the stick there. Throwing the beacon, throwing the nav. Fuel pump on. Uh, fuel tank set to both. Fuel is on. Mixture's full rich. Fuel pump off. Throttle is cracked. And... Beacon lights on, nav lights are on. Pause system test, okay. Engine is now up and running. I'm gonna ignore uh, Fred out here on the cart. Tried to tell him to go away, but he won't. All right, we'll get the GPS up. We do have a flight plan. Uh, as you'll see, it'll pop up in a second. Uh, it should pop up. Do we have any VORs en route? I have no idea. And I've got no look. I've got no flight plan. Interesting. So I should be able to... Why do I have no flight plan? Hmm. is an interesting conundrum because I'm supposed to have one so we're going to have to do this the hard way So I am going to do this. Not sure why that is in that mode. Uh, go back to this mode. got an idea of where we're going. I'm going to put in our destination airport just so I've got it handy. So that is... Make you get you out of there. Uh, it's going to be Charlie Charlie Yankee Golf Echo. Backwards Yankee So Golden, British Columbia, we will hit enter and activate. All right. What cruise altitude shall we uh, decide on today? 6,000 feet, I believe. We're at about 4,000 now, so we'll go up to about 6,000 and then we'll see how we're doing. Not sure what the rise will be as we go through the valleys here. I'm just uh, checking out the detail. I think I know where we're headed. Looking at uh, terrain here. Yeah, okay, I know where we're going. All right, so let's get the taxi lights on, landing lights are off, avionics are all on. I'm 
gonna set my cruise for 6,000. And we should be good to go. I do not have my track IR running today. I'm having issues with the clip for the headset. So I'm gonna be a little bit stifled with that, but that's okay. So let's get going here. You ready to go? Ready to go, sir. Taxi out. Now Willie may end up being a little bit quicker than I am, but that's okay. Right, we're heading down here to runway 26. Let the engine warm up. Beautiful day out here today. And I can say that because we are using the uh, preset weather just to make sure that we get a nice day. This is a sightseeing flight after all, so we want to be able to see things and not be trying to do scud running and dodging clouds and storms. I have been out here in real life. I flew out to Lethbridge, Alberta. Many, well, to be now about 14 years ago and uh, then went and flew along the face of the Rockies down a little bit south of where we are now. It was a very cool day out there flying. It's a place in Canada I've never been to actually is out west pretty interesting it's very flat and you can see the mountains from quite a distance when you start getting out towards them um, really beautiful area out here and when, whenever our political masters will allow us to travel freely again I'll be uh, jumping on my new bike and heading out there do some mountain riding nice uh, zoom in a little bit so I can see where I'm going. All right, control check. And I am kind of fudging this a little bit, trying to see where we are. Okay, that's fine. All right, so controls, yeah, controls are good. Let's get external view here. Up, down, left, right, everything's looking good. That's cool, I can see your uh, control checks from behind. Strobe lights are on, landing lights are on. I'm going. Landing lights. Flaps one. Strobes. So you might as well move out with me. Yep. And then I'll go to the far side of the runway. So I'll have a uh, higher takeoff speed, so. Unless I can manage to restrain myself anyway. Well, I've got so much time flying these 172s, I'm pretty comfortable in them. I should get out into PA44 a bit more. All right. Yeah, it's good fun. It's good fun. I uh, I gotta admit, there's uh, as I was saying before we started, there's a couple things that. I'm annoyed at, but possibly just because the SDK is not where it is. But yeah. all, all in, it's uh, it's a fantastic model to fly. I do really enjoy it, and here I am sitting in it, so I must like it. Uh, what On your lead squad? Yeah, no, I just got a warning. Trying to figure out why. Standby battery. Oh, fuel pumps. Well, you're right. I don't. Oh, is it because of I'm low idle? Is that what your problem is there? Yeah, it is. Okay. All right. I'm gonna roll, and then when you're comfortable, you can follow in behind. Hold it. Going to full power, and we're rolling. Let's stay on the right side of the runway. Rolling. 
Your speed's alive. No wind. Slight, yeah, wind should be pretty minimal. 50 knots. 55. Easing back, and we're up. Set. And we are good. So we're going to go up to 6,000, as mentioned. And then we will uh, see how we go from there. Putting pressure on me because I'm the only one flying with you, so I gotta behave myself. I gotta be seen <laughs> professional. Usually, when there's you know 20 other guys, I can I can sit back and goof around a bit. But. Yeah, I should do another one of those uh, ones that we did the other day, or the last time where we had a bunch of people from the from the community come in. Yeah, there's the Rockies ahead of us. your indicator sir uh right now 68 i'm, I'm just climbing okay i'm gonna uh start putting the nose down a bit i'm at 52 100 now get that speed up Give you a kiss just yet. Right, so nose down, and we'll start accelerating. About 200 feet. Oh, I see. They're off to the right side. Yeah. So we're gonna we're heading up towards. Uh, let's see if we can get the name of the place. There's a valley we're gonna go up. We're gonna kind of follow the rivers that we're heading towards that are off to our right slightly. And then okay. uh, we're gonna cut into the mountains and fly up by Canmore. You might've heard of it. Canmore. And then uh, we're gonna- I know there's a guy there called Mike. There is a guy named Mike from Canmore. And then uh, we're yeah. gonna make a turn at, up around Banff and go further yeah. into the mountains. And we're gonna kind of go up a valley towards Lake Louise. So we should fly by Lake Louise, and then we're going to come around another valley, which will be a bit of a challenge, but I think we can do it. Speed check. Uh, 103. Roger. Just looking for you there. Yep, yeah, behind you. I'm just trying to dial okay. in. Yep. Yeah. That dial in nice and slow. I'll inch up behind you. I should be about 110 by the time I hit six when I level at 6,000 or so. Oh, I see you. So we're going into the foothills here. You can see they're starting to, the scenery is starting to undulate a bit more. Of course, the Rockies stretch all the way from um, Alberta or Alaska all the way down to, I guess, pretty much Mexico. All right, so 
So 6,000 is coming up. See what the terrain does from there. That was the recommended height for the trip. This is over 6,000 feet, so I don't mind. I don't mind being nice and low. It's still pretty flat here. Yeah. A lot of leaks. Yeah, so there's a big one off to our about two o'clock, which is called uh, Ghost Lake. It's probably one of the bigger lakes before we hit the Rockies itself. I don't know. I don't know if you can see the pass we're going to be entering in. It's starting to open up in front of us here. We're going to go over this ridge that's ahead of us, and then we're going to make a left turn and follow that up. We're kind of there's a. I don't know what the road number is, but there's a road that will be kind of following through the mountains. So we're off, I think we're now out of cattle country. I know there's a lot of uh, horse raising and, and horse farms and um, adventure places out here where you can go riding on the edge of the mountains. Like spend a week at a horse ranch type of thing. Which is pretty cool. Would have loved to do that in my younger days. I think now I would just be, after the first day I'd be just in so much pain from it. So I'm kind of level at 113 uh, knots. <laughs> Sorry? Been talking on mute. Oh. <laughs> oh, by all means. You can. Oh, a golf course down there. Uh, Rick, you can say it again, whatever it was. No, no, I was just saying I'm, I'm at 120, just kind of inching up on you. Yeah. I'm, about, I'm stable at about 113 or 112 and a half, actually. That's good. So I was in a I was in a 172 RG, which is a 180 horsepower 172 with retractable gear, constant speed yeah. propeller. And I remember flying along the front edge of the Rockies here, 10,000 feet, and uh, I mean we were above the, those ones, but you could look further into the range and see that there was others that were higher than that. It's kind of a awe-inspiring view. So there's, there's that lake off to the uh, left wing there that I said, the uh, Ghost Lake. Okay. And we're coming in, we're coming into this flatter area where the rivers go and the road follows. So we're gonna like bear left, and you can see the gap in the mountains. That's where we're headed. Okay. I don't know, should I be worried I can hear your engines from here? Um, <laughs> trying to behave myself. Yeah, no, you're pretty... Not, not quite fighter pilot. Pretty good formation. <laughs> Interesting names for coming up. Things like Dead Man's Flats and... And that, but pretty interesting terrain out here. Mention we're heading for the Rockies there. I think, uh, where are you? Let's see if I get a good screenshot here of the two of us. All right, hold it there. There we go. 
I did say cheese, so. Oh, very good. <laughs> So it's interesting, there's actual, uh, I don't think it's an officially recognized course, but they do run a course on mountain flying. Um, and if you've never done it, they recommend if you're going to transition through the Rockies, VFR, to uh, you actually do it. And it's, a, it's about a one day course on uh, flying through the Rockies. And I saw a documentary you got to look out for. Yeah, it's, um, I can't. Be a few waivers to sign, I would think, before you even get in the airplane. Yeah, it's uh, um, there are some definite things that you don't run into anywhere else that can kind of catch you unawares. The big one that yeah. I found was when they talked about mountain waves. Um, it said with the way the air coming from air the west. Air currents? Yeah, the way yeah. the air comes from the west and undulates over the mountains. It's um, modeled to... Uh, flights in 2020, I think. It is. I don't, I don't know how accurately. But, well, uh, and it can be bad enough. I've heard stories of smaller airplanes like Super Cubs and stuff like that, but the the downwind is so fast that even on full power trying to climb, they were still being pushed lower to the ground. Um, and they actually yeah. impact the ground um, as they were trying to climb which is why they say you never approach mountains head on. You always come in on an angle so that you can angle off and get out if you start, you know, running into that. Which shouldn't be an issue today, uh, yeah. given the weather I've, I've set uh, or chosen, but... It, it reminds really, me of driving in the winter, and yeah. uh, just in case you slip into the slush. Yeah. So or keep one wheel on the dry. <laughs> yeah. You see the highway below us? We're heading into the mountains yep. now. So yeah, so this is going to take us uh, in here, and then when we get to the mountains at the far end, we're going to make a right turn, and uh, head up the mountain pass, and then, then there'll be another entrance to our left. We're going to make a hard left. And that is Banff, which of course is the famous uh, nature uh, nature reserve park, yep. tourist destination place. And I do remember, I think it was in June I was on my bike out here and I remember seeing there was still snow on the mountaintops many years ago. Place I always wanted to visit. I know that uh, Banff is one of the starting points for one of the uh, Trans Rocky uh, railway tours. Yes. That will um, take you over the old tracks, uh, all very, the way across the rock. A very Vancouver. expensive Rocky Mountaineer. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I came in, I, I visited friends in Edmonton and I came in up at Jasper and then I rode down through the parks came out at Banff and went to Calgary so right. I actually rode this way out of the park that would have been oh what would that have been 2006 2007 something like that oh, that's cool yeah there's a few parts of the world that uh, pilots are very uh, fortunate this is definitely one of them I would think yeah you can see we're, we're starting to get into the higher ground here and the mountains are just ahead of us. Yep. So we're definitely going to be below the peaks. So if you haven't looked, the strip we're heading to up at Golden is a single runway. Uh, it is a pretty much a north-south. Uh, so we're going to land from the south and on runway 3-2. probably end up doing a tight little left hand circuit but I'm not sure yet. We'll have to see when we get there and take a look at what it looks like. Alright, so let's uh Way. 
So off to our left here, uh, if you can see it down in that valley there, is what's called Barrier Lake. Oh, yeah. And then we're coming up on some of the widenings of the river here. And just around the corner of this valley is the town of Canmore, which we're going to overfly. Everyone wave to Mike. Yeah, I wonder how many non-Canadians are going to get that. <laughs> I think it's it could be even generational at this point. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, good point. So, are you going to tell the are you going to tell the story behind Mike from Canmore? Or? Oh, I don't know. Leave that as a mystery to be solved. Okay. Although I think uh, can we leave that maybe leave that as a quiz? See if uh, anybody can <laughs> figure out. Yeah, if you can figure out who Mike, Mike, Mike from Canmore from is or where it comes from, leave it in the uh, comments. And there is an aviation theme behind it. It's worth checking out. That's a little close to this peak here. Getting a little turbulence. Oh, yeah, I'm I mean, feeling it. I mean, look at the... Wow. Just the detail here as we fly by this ridge here. Snow on the ground, all the pine trees. I mean, the trees are what you find out here, these pines. I think it's just as I came over that peak, and you can see the wash on the plane, and it's starting to bounce up and down. Yeah. I mean, it, to me, that's... Yeah, it's a different level. I mean, this is just phenomenally gorgeous. The sun coming off that water, too, is just... Like it is, uh, from my vantage point, it is pretty hard to see down the valley right now just because of the glare. Yeah, yeah. I mean, inside I was getting glare off the wind uh, windshield. I've come outside to take a look at it. So you got the industry down here doing whatever they're doing. Probably some type of quarry. See the highway on the south side of the, the water here. Absolutely stunning. Could they do? Are you, you going to see things like white water rafting around here? Or the river's too big for that. Uh, I don't know if there's an. Well, in this part, I don't know if there's enough uh, gradient for that. Yeah. Um, I'm sure they do do it out here. We're just not sure where they would do it. So, we're coming up for that turn, as you can see ahead. Some turbulence. And this area on the outer part of the corner is what they call Dead Man's Flats. And it is part of, let's see if I can make out the name, the Bow Valley Provincial Park. So if you look ahead, you can see after the peak, kind of just off to the left, there's those three humps almost directly ahead yep. of us. That's called the Three Sisters. Ah, right. I've heard of that. And then there's Canmore. So we're going to start our turn now. We'll start heading that way. And then, let's see if I can see the next point. Oh, so when you, after you make the turn for Canmore, when you look ahead, you'll see the high, high point there. And that's known yep. as Mount Rundle. Amazing. This is pretty cool. I mean, this is what I like doing this. It's one thing to be up in the airliners and flying, you know, point to point or whatever. Um, but this is the type of flying I did for, for years. Just out enjoying the views from above and seeing what everything looks like. I mean, it's even modeled down to on the, on the left side here. You can see the clear cut where the... Uh, hydro uh, transmission lines would run. So 
through the trees I, where they've cleared the space. I have noticed um, in my area, my little corner of Scotland that I live in. Yeah. That the the towns are somewhat accurate, but uh, the tree formations and the uh, the hills are pretty much dead on, which is quite amazing. Now, did you notice a big improvement? Because you, like, I don't think the U.S. update did anything in Canada, but when they did the U.K. update and they brought in the, those archetype of um, U.K. houses and buildings and stuff, did you notice a, a difference in the towns and, and that, on how they looked? Yeah, uh, I think the, I guess what we would call in the old days, the autogen selection is a bit more appropriate to the types of uh, buildings you would see right so uh, there's definitely an improvement there where I am the satellite telemetry is not as high resolution as what you get in the city so sure I, I did have limited uh, expectations but I was impressed at how accurate the uh, the hills and the mountains look including where where trees should be and where they're not and um, when I flew to roughly where I live and kind of just paused the sim and took a, a view uh, in the normal direction that I would probably look from my house. And yeah. it, it looks it looks pretty much one-to-one. -one. Very cool. So I'm blown away by that because I'd rather have accurate nature than, you know, maybe a town's missing one or two buildings or maybe the buildings don't look quite right. But for the, for the nature around to look exactly the way it does in real life is, is really, really amazing. And then ultimately, that's the more interesting part to look at. Right. So before anyone comments, uh, I did just add more fuel. Um, I exited out at one point, came back in, and I guess my fuel load got set back to default. So I just put more fuel in. I just noticed it was nice and low. I, I, there's a guy here that's done, uh, he's done the, the Brampton Airport, and I've got a video up on, on that. Um, he also did the Buttonville Airport north of Toronto. Uh, but he also did free sceneries for the Toronto area, Mississauga, Oakville, and Niagara Falls. And I did a flight from Brampton and I looped the city and I went down along the water and then back up and landed up at Buttonville. Okay. And, and I got to tell you, with his scenery put in there, I, I, I was following roads. I was like, I yeah. know exactly where I am. I've flown this many times. Uh, flew down yep. over the Toronto skyline, um, went up and around and I mean it was just fantastic just want to throw out a, a thank you to Martin uh, Agard who just subscribed to the channel I just saw that pop up so thank you very much if you're watching this video nice. I appreciate it so directly ahead on the other side of the valley here is Cascade Mountain I feel like uh, I feel like Ed McMahon. <laughs> In what way? I, I almost I need like a signature laugh. Like, oh, oh, oh. you are correct, sir. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The sidekick. <laughs> so as we come up into the opening to the left here, where we're gonna go, you'll see a little hump there in the middle. Just on the other side of that is Banff. So how how big's Banff then? It's not very big. It, it, it's a it's a tourist place, really, tied to the tourism industry and the and the park, obviously. Um, it's not a big population. Um, I'll find out uh, right now. And uh, it's it's probably the number one question I get. Seventy eight hundred people. So it's, it's not a big place. Yeah. So n number one question I get in Scotland when, oh, you're from Canada? Yeah. Do you know? <laughs> have you been? No, no. Have you been to Banff? Oh, uh, really? No. no, I haven't. And then usually they get uh, disinterested and they walk away. Really? Yeah. So. Uh, so. But as, as you know, I'm not from the, uh, the most scenic part of uh, Canada. So. Yeah, well. 
You Although do. we have our own scenery in our own little way. We do. Uh, yeah. It is rather flat. Um, so Banff National Park is one of the largest national parks in North America. It is 6,641 square kilometers. Wow, that's actually pretty big. It is. So we're going to uh, head down here now. You can see the rivers and you can see the town on the other side of the mountain here. As we, there's rivers as we come in. everywhere. Lot, everywhere you look, there's a river. A lot of water coming off of these, uh, coming off of these parks. Are uh, coming off of the mountains. Oh, I think I see a girl in a bikini down there. Not at this time of year, you won't. I think it's still going to be rather cold. So, Banff National Park was Canada's first national park. And they get 3 million visitors a year coming into it to a play town of 7,600. <laughs> uh, hiking, biking, skiing, camping. And the park is uh, a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Now that I didn't know. Yeah. I'm gonna see when I, if I can find out when it was uh, created. Kind of up there with like uh, Machu Picchu and places like that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, flying over it now, you can see it. Uh, there's the town. Of course, you get everything from the railway to uh, highway coming in here. It's nestled in this little valley, mountains all around. Only mountains on all sides. So the park was established, let me get back inside where it's not as noisy. Uh, the park was established on the 25th of November. Guess what year? 1967. 1885. Oh wow, that's old. Ban and apparently there's hot springs here too. Because it was first established as the Banff Hot, Banff hot Springs Reserve. Okay, so that means then at one point, there is, this place was probably covered in volcanoes. Uh, yeah. I would, well, given, well, look what's not too far away if you go south, right? Yellowstone and all that. Cool. So, yeah, this could be a very um, geologically active, or used to be anyway. Um, first signs of human activity in Banff was. Wow. 10,300, now let me just see what they mean by what they wrote here, let's call it 10,300 BCE. And I know... So this place has been occupied first... since probably the first peoples came across the Alaska land bridge. I know who the first visitor to Banff was, that one I know. Who's that? Uh, it was Mike from Canmore. Ah. Well, that would make sense. Uh, it's probably by canoe at that point in time. He's think. local. Yeah. So we're going to carry on up the way here. Oh, here's one. On the left, we are now passing Pilot Mountain. Very Why do they call it that? Uh, don't know. Sure. And pilot, pilot buried up there. Further up here, about ten o'clock, is Storm Mountain. So somebody was probably caught in a storm up there once, and they decided to call it Storm Mountain. I'm sure people are laughing, but it's it's actually a lot of truth to things like that. Oh yeah. So 
going to uh, carry on up here a ways. And we're going to come to Lake Louise. Oh. Which is inset in the mountains on the left. So I'll make sure we get a good view of that. But I'm going to shift a little bit over to the right side of the valley here. Good screenshot opportunity here, I think. Uh, this place is kind of full of screenshots. Oh, they're uh, closing in there. Let me uh, grab this one. That mountain off to our left there, the high peak, yep. is Mount Wimper. Wimper. <laughs> uh, how do they spell it? W-H-Y-M-P-E-R. I'm assuming that's going to be named after somebody. Potentially. I think... Um, but look at the side. These peaks are starting to get higher. Yeah, that, I mean, that's... I mean, you can see yeah. some higher ones. I mean, we're at 6,000 now, so... That's yeah. got to be pushing 10, 10 11,000 easy. I think they're good. they go up to 12 and a half, 13,000 in the mid range, which when yeah, we're, we're I, still on the eastern side of the ranges. One of my favorite little routes to do uh, for a short flight, but very interesting, is uh, Kalsagar to Vancouver. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that that's about 12,000 clearance in some places. Oh, in, in Vancouver. It, actually, hang on. Where are we? Uh, was that Wimper? No. That, uh, yeah, that was Mount Wimper. And then that big one you can see over the tree hill here is yep. Mount Temple. Temple. There's always one. Ah, there's got to be a temple somewhere. <laughs> and yeah, just... Yeah. 200 or 300 year old Bible buried up there somewhere. Yeah, probably one. And just absolutely gorgeous scenery. It's strange, it's a different kind of. You get a different feeling from these mountains. I mean, you have. You've been up in the north of Scotland. I've been up there, and yep. and you get it. It's a, it's a different feeling you get that ruggedness um, yeah. than you do out here. Yeah, I have different kind of different kind of range. I think um, it's, the Highlands are very beautiful. Uh, I find. I don't know if this makes any sense, but the highlands are very beautiful in bad weather. Is there any other time over there? <laughs> there is. There absolutely is. There is sun. There is sun and sunshine in Scotland. But um, I do find that um, for a country that's actually had its fair share of kind of mixed weather, it, it is a place that looks absolutely spectacular in all types of weather. So. True. Um, 
it's sunshine and it is a very beautiful very very beautiful country uh, especially right now all the heather and various kind of natural uh, hedge type of plantation we have around here is turning colors like purple and brown yeah uh, so we do get like a seasonal complete trans trans uh, what do you call it um, Transformation. Transformations, yeah, in in the valleys, in the uh, in the hills, and the mountains. Well, like you said, with the heather, there there's a there's a look to the hills over there when the heather comes in that you you don't see anywhere else in the world. That that dark purple color that you get in, in the gorse and everything, it is That's absolutely it. unique, and it uh, is, yeah. and it's something to see. And if you get a even a, a cloudy day where you've got mist down over the water or in the valleys and you've got the heather there and the odd little bit of sun poking through. Yep. It, it's absolutely amazing. But the mountains out here though, there, there's more of a... It's a weird type of cathedral awe type of thing going on. Um, yeah, it's. I think there's a, there's a majesty here yeah. that is different. I mean, you can just just look at it and and again we're only seeing a little bit of it i mean these mountains stretch for thousands of miles and they're hundreds of miles wide yep and it, it's it's almost too much to to take in so what's up ahead here because it almost looks like buildings uh lake louise yeah there will be buildings up here it's the famous uh, uh chateau lake louise the uh CN Hotel or CP Hotel. Can't remember which railway built it. There also looks to be like a bit uh, of terrain deformation up ahead. I want to say CP. Probably CP. And a little known fact about CP is it CP or CN? I think CP owns three quarters of the railway track in North America. Yeah. That includes uh, the United States. Amazing. It was a while ago, they bought up all the free track, or quite a bit of free, free track. And a number States. of Canada's famous big hotels, and big by big I mean the big stone monolith hotels, are all railway hotels. Um, Chateau Frontenac, Chateau Laurier, the Royal York. I didn't know that. Uh, they're well, all, of course, the Royal York is right across from it's the right across station. Union Station. They're all railway hotels. Huh. Uh, That's where the cool these. The one in Banff, the one uh, up here at Lake Louise, were all built to get people on the trains to come out and be tourists. Back when Toronto was called uh, Hogtown? Uh, well, never officially. <laughs> it was called York for, for a while. Uh, I thought they got rid of these train glitches. Ah, uh, that's what I'm looking at. Yeah. Well, maybe we'll get our can, our can to update at some point. I hope so. Even if it's just some generic code to smooth out the train and stuff like that. Oh, it is loading in. I, I don't know if it's... Uh, it, it seems to be clearing itself up, so maybe it's just a uh, buffering. It is. I've got a few little bits a little bit closer. We'll see what happens with them. I haven't taken as many gigs down as I need. Yeah, it seems to be settling as we fly over top of it. But I was definitely seeing the same thing you were. Some weird artifacting going on in, in that. I think it, depending on the size of your cache too, um, and so the nice thing about Flight Simulator 2020 is if you fly over an area quite regularly, you won't see this happen a lot because uh, once it kind of loads it, it'll, it'll sit yeah. there in your buffer. I've never been out uh, here, so this is all... Exactly the same. Yeah, I've never never been out in the, in the sim here. I mean, there's so many places in the world uh, we should we should really try the uh, I don't know if you've done this but the is it the, um, the salt flats or the oil oil flats or something in Utah? All oh, the salt flats. Yeah. Where's the place with all the colors? I did a oh um, 
Well, we saw some of the colors when we did the Grand Canyon. Um, yep. But if you go down to Arizona, down in uh, the desert, the Sonora Desert there, you get all that reds and everything. You get that in Australia. If you fly in northern Australia, everything's red. Mm -hmm. like the sands are red. The stones are this brilliant red color. It's amazing. Um, I don't run with any cash, so my like I'm usually good enough not to have to deal with this, but I guess there's a lot of detail being sucked down at the moment. So Lake Louise is coming up. Okay. It's going to be on our left. I'm going to make a slight turn. I think it's between these mountains here that I'm coming up to. I'll see if we can see it. Like, I think this is the little town that supports it. And then you go up the way here. Yeah, I think there's the hotel. Okay. Oh, I, I can see the water. Yeah, and that's supposed to be the hotel. There's the lake. Wow. Wow. Huh. So it's kind of elevated. Yep. Oh, that's Five amazing. Hundred. And you can see the uh, you can see the lake right in there with the hotels. It's a big hotel. And I got to turn because we are getting close to the ground. <laughs> uh, I was just gonna say. I'm not being a very good spotter for you. I just got the 500 foot warning. Oh, did you? Yeah. <laughs> so we'll turn away. But yeah, that, that was the. Uh, that's don't say. <laughs> that's I'm, what I'll do. I'll just talk. I'll, if I see yeah. you getting in trouble, don't, don't, don't sink. say. Don't say. <laughs> that's that. But that was pretty cool. Terrain. <laughs> um, so I'm going to climb. I think we're going to go up to 7,000 feet now. Okay. So I'm just going to start a gentle climb. And we're going to go left here. And go down this valley. And you can see the highway there. It carries on. Like a wayward sun? Yes, but we're not there anymore, Toto. <laughs> Oh, the references are we're flying in, today. <laughs> we're not in Africa? Uh, no, wrong one. <laughs> it's more of a three dog night. <laughs> I just broke formation. Ah, uh, well. So, for those of you who don't know, uh, Willie does a. What do you call it? An inter internet radio? Online radio? How do you, how do you uh, we are yet yeah, Sky Blue is the internet radio station. Internet uh, radio been, station that does well your classic rock and roll and stuff like we that. All, all sorts of stuff. Yeah, we. But then um, we Go started ahead. in 2007. Yep. And we've been uh, service servicing the flight simulation and aviation community ever since. Yeah, I was going to say it, it seems to be focused on the flight sim world. And uh, you, yeah, in particular, yeah. do a lot of interviews. Uh, I do. I do. With Including people. yourself, sir. Well, yes, you did me. But who else have you done in the past? Um, yeah, I'm definitely losing losing formation here. That's fine. Um, oh, you, boy, you just flew right under me. <laughs> I'm just going to level out for a bit. Yeah, yeah. I'll let you chase me. Um, I have been very fortunate, so... Uh, I originally was one of the founding DJs back in 2007, and I took a break to raise my family. Uh, my, my wife became pregnant with my daughter, um, and then we had a son as well. So for a number of years, I, I was not involved, and I, uh, with Flight Simulator 2020, the kid's a bit older, decided to get back into it and rejoin the station as Willie Canuck. I was always Willie Canuck, even back in 2007. 
Cool. And um, yeah, uh, back on the radio. And so one of the things I wanted to try was to uh, to do some interviews with people in aviation and flight simulation. And my first interview with was with my my good friend uh, Lee, <laughs> who uh, basically just came on as a trial and he did a little bit of uh, flight simulation, but he I, he pretty much humored me for about twenty minutes. Right, and it was it was lovely to do it. And uh, yeah, I kind of broke the seal with him. And then um, the next interview I had was just by chance, just by asking, was Mikey McBrien from the Series Ice Pilots, uh, General Manager of Buffalo Airways. Yep. And uh, Mikey talked to me for a good hour, and we talked all about um, his uh, YouTube series, which is fantastic, called Plane Savers. Uh, where they restored the DC-3 from pretty much a, a hulk in the field to flying condition. Absolutely amazing what they did. Right. And uh, even Buffalo Joe came on and talked for uh, for a couple minutes. So yeah, it was. That's kind of how it all started. And since then, I've uh, I've interviewed uh, uh, some of the more famous people. Would be Patty Wagstaff, who is a uh, world champion uh, sport sport pilot. Yeah. Yeah, and of, uh, I think for the most part, everyone else has been uh, just key people in flight simulation. I've had Dominic Smith from FlightSim.com, chief editor, and I've had uh, a lot of YouTube cr- uh, content creators, um, such as yourself, starting out. And I've had some of the more established creators like uh, Shane, also known as the Oz Flight Simmer. Yep. No. Uh, yeah, we've spoken with him. Uh, yeah. So yeah. You, you, you're not only hitting the flight sim world; you're kind of moving into aviation in general um, it's always been about both yeah it's yeah. always been about both um my uh, last week in fact i had um dave hodgins who is a uh who was a, a referral from one of your referrals so we had uh, eric dummigan lovely guy uh, aviation photographer yeah things that guy's done with a camera and, and airplanes is amazing and eric uh, put me on to dave uh dave hodgins who is a third generation crop duster and uh, just a lovely guy to talk to wow. and um, you know pure aviation uh, not much anything with flight simulation today but it's just really really interesting to talk to you mm-hmm. uh, so I try to flip back and forth I, my, my first love is flight simulation I'm not a pilot um, but I know I know a lot of pilots and as I often say on uh, on the chat with Gavin you know people say are you a pilot and I go no but I play one on TV yeah exactly play one on the radio yeah. yeah. Ah, that's pretty cool. It's a it's an interesting community, and you never know where uh, things are going to lead and who you're going to be able to talk to. And wow, it's that's a very small world. One big, very, very small world. mountain beside me. <laughs> I know. I was just. Uh, I think we've been sinking a bit too without noticing. Yeah, well, I'm up at seven thousand now. Okay, I've been I'm kind of skirting. I just I don't know. Is it? Is it a natural thing? You just kind of want to skirt the ground a bit, just to soak in the. Yeah, it is. It, it, I mean, it's it, probably it, not a it, good practice. It, it can lead to problems, um, but <laughs> but yeah, it is a, a natural tendency to so, to want to do that. I'll, I'll, I'll just take advantage in my consequence-free environment. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Although I will say this, uh, since I've had Flight Simulator 2020, coming back to Flight Simulation, I have only crashed once. I've had some pretty horrific landings, but nothing that yeah, actually caught yeah, him yeah. say uh, that I've checked out. And that's full realism. Um, that was from from day zero. I had the sim loaded, and I thought, oh yeah, this is uh, the next one from FSX. Let's try this full realism. And um, I didn't crash that plane, but I did. I did fly off the runway <laughs> in, a, in a twenty twenty knot uh, crosswind gust. And I, I suddenly realized, okay, the, these guys are serious. These guys are serious this time. Yeah, my, it's been, my it's first been a joy ever since. 172 flight didn't go too well. And I was like, I think it was within a day or two of getting the sim. And it was like, well, what are you doing? You, know, said, you used to do this for real. Like, come on, <laughs> Spartan up and do, <laughs> do it right. Like, so I finally uh, it's, it's got been back a joy. into it. But it's a great sim. And I look forward to where it's going. Whereabouts are you? Are you still in vision? Uh, I don't know. Am I, I think I'm above and behind you. 
Maybe. Oh, yeah, you're you're up there. Just where are you gonna see if I can? Uh, where are you in reference to me? I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna climb. Uh, I'm below you. Oh, you're yeah, you're right, almost right below me. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, we gotta I'm carry down this valley a, a little bit more. Climb, and I'm gonna try and let you overfly me. We're gonna make a hard uh, right when we get down a little bit further here. So just to bring us back to the flying bit here, we have a uh, airport elevation of 2576 when we get to where we're going. So, so you're at 7,000? 2,500 feet. I'm at 7,000, yeah. Okay. It's about there. Oh, right. Um, shouldn't be too long behind you. See how quickly I can get back into formation and really put my skills to the test today. So I think one of the big things that I find about this is that it gives me the opportunity to do something kind of like that, that path I never took. Um, yeah. I couldn't I couldn't fly until I had the money to pay for lessons, which meant I was well into my own career and all, all that stuff. So it never became a career for me. It, it was a, just a hobby. Um, yeah. Something I did for a number of years, but it you know flying the A320 and now flying the CRJ and the thing and whatever comes next um, it just gives me that little taste of you know this is something I could have done at some point if I went that route I think we, I think we all have those kind of moments um, I'm living vicariously through my nephew now so he uh, he's just put in his final um, application for scholarship with uh, local aviation school Right. And he's got two letters of reference, one from uh, an ex-RCAF uh, fighter pilot, and another from a guy who's been a flight, inst flight instructor for 30 years, both know him very well and think that he's got the stuff. He's 16 years old. Right. And uh, he's, you know, he's been with Air Cadets already, so, you know, he's got a good shot at going all the way. And uh, I think for a lot of us, you know, by the time we actually get our act together, and realize it's uh, something we really love. Uh, we've lost all that precious time uh, that we could have been, you know, getting established, getting our hours up. And you know, it's really, really difficult to catch up at that point. You know, it is. It's, it's one of the it is. careers that the earlier you start, the more likely you are to hit it. I know when I did my ground school, we had a 12-year-old in the class, which is the first age you're allowed to do ground school. Um, yeah. You can't solo until you're 16. Um, but you can do dual and you can do ground school and stuff. And I remember watching them. Uh, well, at first I thought it like, you know, are you here with your parents or something? But no, <laughs> he, he was he was taking ground school and, and watching them go through everything. It's like he was determined. Uh, and when we got into yeah. the more technical maths and stuff on navigation and all that calculations and all that stuff, he was in there figuring it out and, and doing it all. And it was like... I wonder today, I mean, that was 20 years ago now, going, oh, I yep. wonder, wonder what he, if he actually made it, if he's actually flying for a living now. Probably. I, uh, one of my favorite guests, uh, Tim, who's on YouTube as Corporate Pilot Dad. Yes. Um, we had a really good conversation, and uh, one of the things that uh, he mentioned was that passion, passion uh, reigns supreme. He said it's, flying is not actually that complicated anyone can do it uh, if they have the dedication and the passion to follow that dream yeah I mean I, I find and I'm honest with myself I was never a great pilot I, I mean I was competent but I didn't have a yeah. nat natural feel for it I know I know a couple of people who do okay we're gonna make a hard right here um, okay I know slowly I, couple, slowly getting back into yeah, formation here a couple people who do and they can get in any airplane, and after a couple flights in it, I mean, they're... Well, just natural in the state. Natural with it. Um, where I was always having to work it. Um, yeah. But... Uh, if, if you like systems, and you like doing that type of stuff, and... Can keep, keep with it, I mean, yeah, you're right. Anyone, anyone can kind of take it on and do it but yeah. uh oh the cost if you're paying for it out of pocket is something oh, else I well i think uh, my nephew 
he he flies once a week at the moment and it goes up to twice a week but it's two two hundred and fifty dollars canadian per flight yep with an instructor yeah yeah well it was funny i took it's my... in a uh i think it's in a 172 yeah when i took my brother out he flew with me when we went to the rockies it was a 10-day trip and it was 30 yep. 33 and a half hours i think it was and uh I remember when we got back and stuff, he said, so how much did that cost? And I went, well, bear in mind, this is going back to, when did we go out there? 2012, I think it was. I yep. said, uh, you know, this is, uh, he goes, how much was it? And I said, oh, about three and a half thousand. And he went, well, that's, <laughs> he goes, that's not bad. And I said, no, that's just the fuel. <laughs> he goes, what? I said, yeah, I'll get most of that back, but. Yeah, the, the plane costs a lot more than that. Yeah. Yeah, it's not a... It's a, it's a, it's the best hobby in the world if someone else is paying for it, I think. It is. So we're getting close. Um, you can see that... You can, I mean, this is what's really cool. Look at the trees. They're, they're thinning out towards the top of the mountain. You're getting up to the snow line. I mean, it just looks so so real back in formation please absolutely cool so we're gonna I'm gonna start descending so I'm gonna go down to 6,000 okay. feet uh, we're gonna okay. be coming down into uh, towards golden so I will Start my descent. I'm gonna come back on the throttle a bit so I'm not rocketing away here. Yeah, I'm backing off a bit just to give you a bit of room. So we're basically gonna follow this valley down, it'll make a bit of a left turn and then that takes us out into the river valley. I think I don't know if that's the Columbia River or not. Oh, sorry. Just like all the way up here, does it? Sorry. I uh, well, yeah, Columbia River does come up to. Yeah, it is the Columbia River. I just took a look. Again, that's. Uh, wouldn't want to be flying in here in bad weather. No, I was, um, it was when you were on about mountain flying earlier. I remember seeing a documentary, and uh, when it was an experienced pilot, but he one of the things he mentioned about VFR is that uh, things can change very, very quickly, especially with uh, fog and, and cloud. And it can go one minute from knowing exactly where you are and, and being quite happy to the next minute just completely disoriented and not being able to see yep. any point of reference. They did a, uh, a study once. They took uh, VFR pilots, everyone from guys who've been flying for a long time to student pilots. They put them in a simulator. Right. And they said, right, we are going to simulate you flying in the cloud. They said, just try to instruments control the airplane right yep. keep control I, th I think it was 186 seconds was the average before the airplanes wow. hit the ground wow and every single one of them like none of them had any instrument training other than what they got on their private license or had done yeah. anything um like someone like me who's done a lot of sim time has a better yep. understanding of instruments uh, yeah. But they they yeah. they didn't, and they, the average was a hundred. I think this was done in the states, but it was a hundred and eighty six seconds um, before they they lost it. And they were coming out of the clouds upside down, and they had no idea. And upside down. Upside down because upside down. It's it's weird what actually happens. Okay, you can see ahead how it's opening up. Yep. That's the uh, color uh, Columbia River Valley, and the okay. town is right at the end of this valley where it peaks out where the river is and that's where the airport is okay all right so we're gonna keep descending I'm gonna go down to 5,000 now so 
still kind of doing the autopilot thing. Just taking us out. So yeah, the flying into bad weather is not good. And so you can watch. And I remember doing my flight training, standing out on the ramp waiting for my instructor and he'd come out and I'd have the, the weather forecast, the METAR and stuff and the TAF in hand and I'd be looking up at the weather and he'd walk out and he'd look at me and goes, what do you, what? And I said, we're not going today. And he, he just, after a while, when he knew I understood everything, he'd just go, okay. Because the weather, <laughs> the weather wasn't good and it was going to get worse. And he'd just go, okay. Yeah. At the beginning, he'd like, okay, okay, explain your thinking on this, right? And then we'd go through it. But yeah, yeah it became a, all right, I trust you. Especially if we were doing cross-country stuff. <laughs> all right, so we're getting close to the airport. Safety first. Safety first, always. Absolutely. You can always fly another day, but not if you end up crashing the airplane. So, so we're going to uh, come out here. The airport's directly ahead of me. I can see it. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to overfly the airport at 3,500 feet. I'm going to go into a left pattern. So I thought I might lay, lay, let you land and settle, and then I'll uh, I'll probably do another circuit and come in after you. Sure. Just because I'm probably going to land a bit hotter than you, uh, so. So we're coming out of the mountain now, and that that is the Columbia River that we can see in the valley wow. there. Wow. Yeah. Beautiful. Stunning. It's nice the way it all opens up in front of us. Must be something to live here. So I'm going to come off the autopilot. Autopilot? Autopilot? Yeah, I've been using autopilot. <laughs> well, it's I've easier when your information to form on a stable. It is. No, I appreciate it. I've been on manual the whole time. Yeah. So my, oh, uh, I know. My fingers are going numb so, from uh, constantly on the trim control. <laughs> it's, 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 it's one of the tricks you learn when you do formation flying is uh, autopilot uh, helps provide a sta lead. stable yeah. surface for the other yeah, aircraft if you have it. Like the stuff, no, like, I, I, the and, stuff and in the museum, there was no <laughs> autopilots in those. <laughs> so it was all done by hand. Uh, that's very much appreciated. All right, so we're coming over the airport. I'm a little high, but I'll just keep my descent going. Squaring myself to the runway. Okay. Over there, midfield. Just watch your altitude on this side because the terrain does slope upwards. Yeah, I'm very much uh, keeping an eye on that. downwind oh yeah we are I can't even see the airport now it's below the ridge so, 500. 500 feet speed coming back I should be getting footage of this trimming back If I read the actual manual for the airport, it probably says circuits should be on the other side, but that's fine. 1500. Trim. Speed down. Full flaps. Power to idle. Oh, taking here. All right, 
60 knots. This is a steep descent. Doing it mainly because of the terrain. So full flaps, got speed right back to idle. 500. 60 knots coming down the chute. Rather steep descent, but it'll flare off at the bottom. Kill the airspeed, it's a fairly long runway. Not too worried about rolling out. A little bit of turbulence over the back end here. Keep around the center line. Winds are from the left, slight uh, left quartering crosswind about three knots. 59 knots, hold it down to the numbers. Start the flare, coming back to 55, 50, and we're down. Okay, I'm coming in for a buzz. I'm just going to take a look, and I'll come back, swim back for. Um, yep, I'll come out and watch you. And tell, tell me when you're nice and parked. I am clear of the active runway. We'll park it over at the fuel pumps here. So it flaps up. We'll take the landing lights and strobe lights are now off. Come on, start taxiing. You can do it. There we go. Lost my bearings. Is that worse than losing your marbles? <laughs> um, good question. And I am at. Oops, no, I don't want that. I'm at the pumps. Right, no so lights are all off. Master's off. Avionics is off. Almost done. Almost done. Almost done. Oh. Sorry, shutting that. Oh. Where'd you go? I don't see you. Oh, I'm here. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna buzz you. No, that's what I mean. Yeah. I, I don't see you anywhere. I'm just. Uh, I'm, once I start tracking the words, yeah, I'll tell you. I'm hanging out. <laughs> I'm hanging out over the runway. I want to see you put her down. Well, that's the question. Which way did you land? Uh, runway three two. Three two. Okay, so I'm gonna come back the way. I'm gonna bu I'm buzzing you from uh, the opposite direction first. Okay. And I'm gonna swing Turn. around and land. Okay. Not uh, quite by the book, but hey, whatever. <laughs> I've got the drone up, don't hit it. I'll try not to. You can really see how high that terrain is on that uh, western side of the runway. Definitely meeting for an infantry interesting approach. I haven't done like a throttle off, full flap descending uh, approach and landing like that. Oh, there you are. Approach and landing like that in quite a while. Oh, you can hear you coming in, yeah. Doing the air show pass? Absolutely. Very nice. Right. Now, let's get a bit more uh, well behaved. Sound really plays up when I start moving the drone. I think I actually, after, actually that, after that tomfoolery, I now got to prove that I can fly this thing. Oh, Nick just sent me a message. Said, oh, I missed it. <laughs> yeah. 
This is a beautiful spot, though. Just looking around here. Uh, it's lovely. The sun's starting to come out. Well, of course, the, I think the thing if you, you suddenly realize is that a lot of this valley is in a shadow. Yeah. Well, yeah, until midday it would be. So I think that like this is this is pretty much I think the Columbia River is the BC border, or at least the edge of the mountain ranges. You can just see just if we go down here to like this is one of the streets down here. I mean, look at look at the view. I'll just walk out this guy's front door at the mountains. Like you're surrounded by mountains, just absolutely gorgeous it's got run over by a car oh, here he comes yeah you almost have to do a river approach for this runway Oh, very nice. Mm -hmm. A little sway there. I just want to get rid of pills. <laughs> <laughs> Twist joysticks aren't, aren't the best. Well, that's what I started with. It was uh, when I first got it. I had to dig out my old Logitech 3D Pro, and I uh, used that for a little while. And then I ended up getting rudder pedals about a month in, and a yoke back in October. And now I'm waiting on my throttles. Yeah, I had uh, had all that stuff. I ended up giving it away. Which, uh, missing it now. Missing it now, very much so. Very much so. All right. So there he is. So everyone, I hope you've enjoyed uh, this flight through the Rocky Mountains and uh, going between Alberta and British Columbia. Willie Canuck, thank you for joining us on the flight. It's been great chatting well, with you again. Much, Absolute pleasure. And we hope you will Come all on. join us again on the next one. So I'm going to leave you with some views here as we take off out of Golden, B.C. Don't know where we'll be going next, but I'm sure it will be more stunning views. Till then, bye for now. Brilliant.